Have you ever been in a situation in the heat of the moment, you reacted in such a way that later on when you looked back, you regretted it because your emotions were running so high and you wish the earth would open up and take you back in or that you could just take it all back, but the damage was already done? Well, stay tuned as I will go through what is emotional intelligence and to help us go on a journey or to gain emotional intelligence so we will not have these moments of regret in the future. All right, let's get into it. So if you remember, health entails physical, mental, or the emotional, right? And I added the spiritual. So we're gonna dive into the emotional today. What are emotions? They are basically feelings that are derived from certain circumstances, okay? So that's joy, anger, fear, trust, sadness, or surprise disgust and anticipation and all of these are not just black and white they are literal they have different shades i'm going to show you the spectrum so they have different facets as i said so joy has like serenity ecstasy while sadness has grief and pensiveness those are states of sadness and those are states of joy what is emotional intelligence emotional intelligence is the ability to understand use and manage your own emotions in positive ways to relieve stress communicate effectively, empathize with others, overcome challenges, and diffuse situations, right? That basically are detrimental to us. So if you have any problem wondering what emotional intelligence is, like living without it is, if you ever watched The Big Bang Theory with Sheldon Cooper or somebody who just cannot get sarcasm or somebody who just cannot understand emotions that's what the lack of that is to the extreme because of course it's a spectrum right somebody who fully gets emotional intelligence and somebody who fully doesn't and then most of us are somewhere along the spectrum of it all so if you are on the other end of emotional intelligence like zero you are more like a robot with choices not with the emotions not with the intelligence and all of that why does emotional intelligence matter at the beginning of the video i asked if you've ever been in a situation that you've regretted because you did something you said something that when you looked back you regretted it yes you can always apologize but the truth is there's an analogy that i learned some time ago when you have a piece of wood and you hammer nails into it or one piece of nail you'll pull out the nail but the hole is still there so the um, anger or the negative emotion or the blowing up is like hammering the nail into the piece of wood and when you hammer that nail it causes the damage even though you'll say sorry which is pulling out the nail it doesn't matter the damage is done the hole is made the consequences follow the hole is in the piece of wood so that's the point becoming emotionally intelligent is learning to not have that happen learning to not cause damages in our relationships in our lives another reason emotional intelligence is important as a mother uh, or as an uncle or an aunt if that's what you are if you're not yet a parent or a father if you're a father you don't want to be passing this deficit of knowledge you know it says my people are destroyed by a lack of knowledge the bible says that so it's important that we know what emotional intelligence is and we understand it and we take that on in our life we practice to be emotionally intelligent so that we can pass it on to our children so we're not passing on broken relationships not being able to communicate properly with those they are around those they will communicate with later on in life and this is why we need to learn to be emotionally intelligent so the next generation the young ones around us can learn as well don't forget to like share subscribe and comment below all right there's a dilemma right now with us um, where women they are trying to date they're trying to find partners but they cannot because the men are not emotionally um, in tune they're not in tune with their emotions they are not where the women want them to be while some parents when we're raising our sons right mothers and fathers little boy falls and bruises his knee and you say don't cry are you a girl stop the crying or as we would say in the Jamaican vernacular top ball in your girl listen you are cowing down that child you're cowing him down even our girls we do it too at times and we teach them to not be emotional so later on in life they can't find a proper, a proper partner the women who we teach we teach women to be emotional because as we say it's like they're okay it's okay that they can cry and express their emotions but our men should not and so we teach them to express themselves the girls but not the boys and we need to cut that out it really starts with us 
mommies, daddies, aunties and uncles. For children, it's really for us to get them acquainted with what their emotions are. Of course, they can't control them. So we just get them acquainted with what those emotions are and then we help them through it. Yes, but you cannot help somebody if you yourself, as a big adult, you are struggling with your emotion. It, it kind of not, not adding up. If you are going to be like, okay, I'm helping you to deal with your emotion, how to deal with anger, how to deal with happiness, how to be, deal with being surprised, when I don't know how to deal with it. So we need to start with the man in the mirror, basically, according to Michael Jackson. Yeah. Start with yourself. Emotional intelligence has four components. One, self-management. Two, self-awareness. Three, empathy. And four, relationship management. So first one, self-awareness. Adapt to changes. You can control your impulsive feelings and behaviors. You can decide to say, I feel like this, but I'm not gonna act like this, right? Your feelings become your thoughts, which then become expressed as the, the emotions that others will see us portray. And then those are the actions. Self-management also involves taking initiative and being able to follow through with commitments that we made. So you told somebody something, let your word be your bond and follow through with those commitments. Self-awareness, to be able to look at yourself, be able to be like, no, Stasia, you did not do well in that situation. Learn from it, move on. Instead of um, being like, everybody's wrong, I am right, because you are unable to see yourself. You are, you are unable to do self-management, the first one properly, unable to be aware of who you are. So it's also good to know your strengths and your weakness, to do introspection, to be like, these are the things I'm good at, these are the things I'm not good at, so that you can work on them. It's like taking stock of yourself. And this is not for you to criticize yourself to the ground, to the point where you don't have self-confidence or you don't have confidence in yourself. No, that's not what I'm saying. We need to have self-confidence. Self-confidence is needed for you to move forward, for you to become emotionally intelligent. If five out of 10 things you realize that I'm good at, you, you are like, okay, I'm good at these things. You give yourself a little pat on the back for those, but you move towards the others. You don't just kill yourself for the five that you're not good at. You just focus on the negative to be like, I am not good at this, so whatever. And you focus on that and you, you, you sink yourself into the ground. No, not what I'm saying. Empathy is really when you understand emotional cues, you understand when someone is going through an emotional time, whether happy, sad, whether a wedding, a funeral, yeah, you understand that and you are able to comfort that person. You, it doesn't have to be happening to you or it doesn't have to be a situation where it happened to you, but you can relate. You can offer a shoulder for the person to lean on. This is being empathetic, trying to put yourself in their shoes. And the last component, but definitely not least, is relationship management. Same thing, taking stock of your relationship, realizing the role you play in that relationship, realizing the role the other person plays so that both parties can add equally to the relationship and that you can inspire and influence others, others in a very positive light. So as I said, self-awareness, self-management, empathy, and relationship management. These are the four main components of emotional intelligence. So, so far, if this added any value to you, if this has opened your eyes to something that you've never known before or has helped you in any way, like, share, subscribe, and comment. See you at my next video.